Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with Cool Guy. Welcome to another episode of Jeepers with Cool Guy. As you can see, we're getting really close. Uh, so if you've been paying attention to my videos, this is the 79 Golden Eagle CJ7. What we're going to do tonight is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. And it's something that I, when I first did the 84, I pulled the thing out and I'm like, okay, what do I do with this? Because it's crazy. Well, let me show you what that is. The engine wire harness. I'm sure you're looking at this thing and going, wow, that thing looks really good. Well, that's because I've cleaned it up and got it all new wire harnessed up. But that will also be another video coming sometime in the near future. But for right now, I want to preface this with a little bit of information. This is for a 79 CJ7. What that means is, is that is pre-emissions, which kicked in in, I think, 81, 82. That's when they put the computer in the CJ7 and ran five miles worth of vacuum lines and all kinds of stuff when they were trying to figure out how to hit the emissions mark for that, that de part of the decade. This is a much simpler wire harness. But what you'll get out of this is the, the basics. And those are the things that if you do what is called the nutter bypass and you remove the computer I'm not saying you should do that, but also pay attention to my HEI distributor install and that will show you how to get your wire harness out of your 82 to 86 to look like this in your engine bay. So we're going to install this right now and we're going to go step by step. I'm going to show you what everything connects to and if there is something that it, if there is a wire that doesn't connect to anything, then I will at least show you or tell you what it's supposed to connect to. I will reference this a lot in the video where I show you how to clean up these things and relume them and what every single one of the wires actually goes to. But the one thing I will tell you right now is if you're going to do this um, and you're going to put it inside the wire loom, get a good roll of electrical tape. The cheap stuff, it peels off. It's in a warm engine bay, a hot engine bay, you're gonna regret it. Spend, a, spend 40 cents more and get a good roll of electrical tape. We're gonna start with the beginning part of the wire harness. That would terminate at the alternator. It consists of two pieces. There is a plastic plug that these two wires connect into, just like that. That plugs into the side socket, which is kind of a pain in the ass to get to in the side of the alternator here, just like that. And the other part is this two wired component that has the power wire coming from the alternator into this post, and then it splices out, and then it runs to the main solenoid, and it attaches onto this post along with the fusible link that runs out to the main power line. There is also two posts on the solenoid, S and I. The S has the blue cord and the I has the red with black tracer on it. Apparently the previous owner had taken off the coupling. There's a rubber coupling that connects these two. They're not actually physically connected. It's just a kind of a harness that branches between these two and they just plug onto these two posts. But my previous owner had cut them out so I just put um, terminals on it and then screwed them onto these posts. This is a solenoid for a manual transmission. I'm pretty sure that the automatic transmission has a third post underneath the solenoid here. I don't know what that's for. I'll look it up and maybe put it in the comments if I can figure it out. The other post, the one on the right side, goes to the four gauge wire that actually runs down to the starter motor. The solenoid itself is actually grounded through the body uh, into the fender here. 
So you want to make sure that when you mount your solenoid and or if you have repainted your fender or whatever that may be, you want to make sure that there is grounding connection between the solenoid posts, these bolts here, and the fender and the battery. So once you get everything hooked up, take a voltmeter and test continuity between these bolts and the negative connection on the battery. So I've done this wire uh, harness the best way that fits for my setup. Everybody's wire harness is going to be slightly different depending on what components you have in there. So take this as a guide, not as verbatim as to exactly how you're supposed to hook up your wire harness. Because there are certain wires on here that don't hook up to anything that are part of this model. I'll show you that right now. So for my configuration, I've got this wire loom that wraps around here. I've just taken one of the, the plastic wire harness mounts, put it into the top of the fender here, run the line along, and this is where these main power and ignition wires all run along. It goes down along the inner part of the fender, and then the wires from this point start to split out. This black with red or this red with black tracer, the one that connects to the eye post on your solenoid, goes up to the positive side of the ignition coil. This plastic piece with the, the green wire and the red wire coming out of it just slips right over the top of the coil. It should just clip into place. Just like that. And that splices out and connects to this female connector that also is red with a black tracer is for a capacitor jumper. I don't know exactly what that is. Um, I'd be interested to figure that out. If you know what it is, please advise so that we can all figure it out and learn. Further down the loom, a few more inches along the way, is your distributor connector. This is just an orange, purple, and black line that connects into the plug that comes out of your standard Ford distributor. Most of the ones that were placed into the, the inline six 258 motors on the AMC's were Ford Motorcraft distributors. Next in line is this green wire that connects to the coil. This goes, and I'll show you in a moment, over to the ignition control module on the driver's side part of the vehicle. Next in line in the wire loom is your oil pressure sensor. This is for a 79, so it's just the single post oil pressure sensor. This is what gives the signal to your dash gauge for your oil pressure. On the later models, there is a T-shaped adapter that the oil pressure sensor and the oil pressure switch are all connected to. But like I said, this is for a 79, so it's a lot more simplified. This wire just one runs up and along and connects into the wire loom. There's also and this is really hard to see, a brown wire that goes underneath the battery tray over to your blower motor. You can see it running right along here. It goes behind the battery support tray and then connects right to your blower motor right there. You can just see the connector. It is a light brown wire. Uh, looks to be pretty thick, but that may just be the insulation. Next is the reverse light switch. This goes underneath the body, right above the bell housing, into the transmission case and plugs in there. So that wire goes underneath there, comes up and around and connects right into this loom. This is what turns on your reverse lights when you put it into gear. It's actually a separate wire and this is where it connects in. This is the transmission access point with the transmission inspection plate removed. Right here is your reverse light switch. This is the other end of that wire that we just looked at. Want to learn more about how to rebuild your T150 or your Dana transfer case? Check out my videos. It's actually pretty simple for, to a certain degree, but it's really cool to do. All right, back into the engine bay. Rear of the engine, firewall. 
These two plugs, I can't figure out what the green one's for. I've already checked out the wire harness and I cannot figure out what it was connected to. This red one with white, white tracer and this female connection for an anti-diesel solenoid. I don't know what an anti-diesel solenoid is. I don't know where that would go. I have absolutely no idea what it looks like. Alright, moving to the other side of the engine. We are now on the driver's side. This is your engine temperature sensor. Basically, this regulates the water flowing through the inner core of your engine. And this is a purple with white tracer. Just comes out of the loom and plugs in right into this post. Before we move on, I do want to mention that some wire harnesses, this is an L-shaped plug. For this one, it happens to be straight. My 84, it's an L-shaped plug. 79, straight. So moving the loom uh, across the top of the firewall, you want to make sure that you go over the top of the brake booster or the master cylinder if you don't have power brakes. <laughs> one interesting indicator of if somebody's done some strange wiring is where this wire, this main loom, actually wander, wanders. If it's underneath, it might be a little shady. Anyways, uh, you want to make sure that you have one of your harness clips in this hole in the top part of your firewall right underneath the cowl because this is a really nice place to have it supported. Now we're right in front of your VIN plate on the firewall. This is where your wire harness connects behind the dash. And there's a couple wires that run out of this. First is this black, double black wire with this connector and the separate wire loom. This goes to this white plastic double posted component. This plugs right into your proportioning valve. This is your emergency brake indicator. So whenever you put your emergency brake on, that will signal the light in your speedometer to turn on so that you know that your emergency brake's on. This just plugs simply right into the proportioning valve. So you just want to make sure that you put that right down through there and connect that in. Another set of wires is this set. This is the ignition control module. So what I was telling you about earlier, the orange and purple and black wire that comes out of the distributor runs across and connects into this. And then this green wire is the other port or the other wire that goes to the ignition coil. The blue and the red, the red is your main power line and the blue is the, your ignition line that runs over to the starter solenoid. These are the two plugs that come out of your ignition control module that's mounted to the inner fender of the driver's side. So all you need to do is just lube these things up really nice and then plug those two plugs in. I'm going to do that right now. Before we move on, I wanted to point out uh, that there's this orange and yellow wire with this connector. This is for the QuadraLock kick-down switch uh, for an automatic transmission. Mine's manual, so I have nothing to hook this up to. Next is a yellow wire. This connects directly to the wiper motor right underneath your washer tank. This just slides in and connects on nice and easy. The wiper motor is right underneath the tank here. I'm just trying to figure out where the connector actually is. It's a flat prong connector. There's also a, a ground line that comes from the wiper motor and I'm going to ground that right here on the firewall. But the connector for this is right underneath the driver's side of the fender. You just have to kind of feel your way in there. Okay, next in line is this red wire. This red wire connects to the single port underneath the horn. Red with white tracer. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're reaching the end of the engine wiring harness. Super exciting. So you're gonna to wanna to take the longer, the longer side and that's going to connect to the passenger side. And there's four connections to each one of the arms. Side marker light. This I will put in the description 
of the video as to what the side marker light bulbs actually are if you need a replacement for them. Then you have the green and white wire, which is the parking light. Then you have the, the three connecting block, black block with three gray wires, two with gray with a white tracer, and then the, the single gray one. And then the ground line. This comes out of the headlights and this wire, this connector, needs to be grounded through the grill. There should be a small screw hole somewhere along the back part of the grill underneath the air intake vent where you can screw this in and ground this. So again, when you get all this stuff in, test this ground, run a voltmeter from this ground, that screw, that you put into the grill to the negative battery post, making sure that everything in this wire harness is grounded. Okay, so I'm gonna do the passenger side first. It really doesn't make a difference what order you put this in. The side marker light goes through a hole in the side of the grill into the hole that's across from the, the grill in the fender. So take your green and white wire with your brown connector and slide that into the parking light until it clicks. Take your headlight, plug that right into the back of your standard headlight, which is what I have. I'm just going with the standard halogen lamps. And then get a stainless steel sheet metal screw and ground that right into one of the holes in the back of the grill. Yeah, I'm going to do that from the inside because I still haven't put the radiator in. I need to backtrack here a little bit. You're supposed to put your wire harness through the side hole in the grill. Duh. A couple things to note when you're going to put this ground screw in. Take something sharp, scissors, whatever that may be, and scrape off whatever paint may have wound up coating the metal in this hole because you want to make sure that you've got a really good ground and once you get the paint scraped off and I know that this kind of hurts your heart a little bit because you put so much effort into it just coat this thing with a whole bunch of that dielectric grease or that super lube both of them are waterproof and it will kind of seal the paint in between your screw head and the nut all right just put a nice big glob of it on there and then you're going to want to run this to the inside because otherwise it's going to wind up complicating your radiator install. Slide your ground line over the back part of that screw and then put on your lock nut. I'm using stainless steel nylon lock nuts for almost all these things just so that I don't have to ever worry about them one rusting out or two moving. Alright got it in fastened. I used one of those uh, serrated washers inside of the head for the bolt just to add a little bit of extra security and maybe if I could get that to go through the paint without shredding it then I might be able to get even a better contact so there we go now you have the the headlights installed and grounded let's take a look at underneath the fender here as to where that wire loom uh, clip mounts. Okay, here we are underneath the passenger fender. The hood latch, which is right center of the screen right now, has two bolts that screw into captured nuts on the inside of the fender. I just took this one of the original plastic wire looms and just screwed it on to the end of that bolt and you can see how it pulls the wire loom up out of the way but you also notice on the left side of the screen the hole of where it comes through the fender as you run your wire loom harness across the upper part of the grill you're going to want to have three of the wire loom clips that clip into the top part or underneath the the top section of the grill 
This is the underside looking up from the bumper. These are the three back side of the clips that hold the wire loom clip into place. Those clips look like this. And they just clip into place and lock. And then this is, this part right here is what comes up through the metal. These I salvaged or I kept all the original wire clips that came with the body. I, I'm sure you could find these online. If I can find them, I'll put them in the description. But these are really nice to have. All right, that concludes another episode of Jeep with Cool Guy. I know it was kind of a choppy video. Hopefully you got the gist of where the wires and the connectors all connect to in the engine bay for the pre-emissions CJ7s. Maybe a little bit of the CJ5s. I guess it would probably be most of the CJ5s. It's a really simple engine wire harness setup. Uh, next video that I'm gonna do after this will be the, uh, the dash wire harness. Really not all that much more complicated. It's just got a lot more fasteners and it's on a lot tighter spot. So look forward to that video. But anyways, if you got any questions on the wire loom, the, the wires, the connectors, the gauges of certain wires, uh, the colors of certain wires, because I may not have done a, the best job of showing each one of the actual wire colors, please let me know. Put it in the comments and I'll respond. Um, the other thing you can do is look in the comments and I will uh, put my email address and I will send you a wire harness diagram, factory service wire harness diagram for a 79, which would probably translate into most of the years. The most important part of this video is to like and subscribe. Why? Because it makes me better, it makes us all smarter and more edumacated, and it just keeps the CJ7 community growing. It's a small niche community, but we all gotta stick together.